Obviously, thanks for inviting me here today. Um, yeah, as uh, Jeff has said, I uh, coordinate the uh, Australian Lamb Supply Chain Group. Um, this group is a collective of some 20 to 25 people who work nationally, uh, collaboratively, seeking co-investment and building capacity in the Australian lamb industry. You know, uh, uh, they're a very passionate group, um, a, a very excited group, and I think as producers within the industry, you couldn't help but be excited about the journey of the Australian lamb industry uh, over the last uh, uh, two and a half half uh, to three decades. It is definitely you know, a, a wonderful story and a great industry to be in. The Lamb Supply Chain Group, um, it, it's actually focused on increasing the lean meat yield percentage um, in our Australian lamb while maintaining it, its eating quality and a couple of speakers will address various aspects of that uh, during this morning as well. The uh, key tool or the central hub of the Lamb Supply Chain Group is we've developed a, 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 a souped up Excel uh, program called the Lamb Value Calculator and we actually work and collaborate with supply chains or processors um, to actually uh, uh, help them calculate the value proposition for actually investing in lean meat yield and eating quality uh, technologies, measurement technologies within their plant which then can actually be provided as feedback uh, to producers to then instigate some further further practice change and keep our industry going forward to attend to the needs and wants of our, our consumers. The lamb industry, its key success is it's had the consumer in its sights uh, from, from, from the get-go. Um, you can see there are a few things that we actually do in the lamb supply chain group, but one of the key strengths is we actually collaborate with the actual supply chains or processes, a good half a dozen of them. We might just put that down on the t a desk here, Jeff. Okay. Yep. We don't need to have that on the. Don't need to have that on the floor. That might just uh, put a spanner in the work, sort of thing. Um, and so we, we collaborate with uh, a half a dozen supply chains, which actually have a footprint of some 60 to 70 percent of the Australian lamb industry. Um, and uh, uh, our key focus is to embed the research and development in the supply chain from day one, um, and, and actually uh, uh, move it through proof of concept and through to commercialisation. So gone are the days of R and D being done off to the side and then actually having to develop a commercialisation plan. Commercialisation is done real time within the supply chain. It reduces the timeline for uh, technology to actually uh, uh, come to realisation and of course it actually sharpens the focus and the practicality of that technology. Um, take home messages out of today is that I, I would like you to uh, uh, seek carcass compliance and, and feedback on a couple of new aspects of the Australian lamb industry being lean meat yield percentage and, and eating quality. Also like you to utilise some of the decision support tools that I'll share with you um, and uh, obviously gain a, a, an understanding of the on-farm effects of, of eating quality, you know, being breed, age, the growth path of the animals, um, the, uh, the carcass specification and the pre-slaughter handling that you as producers are actually uh, actively involved in. And, and above all, and in, in your notes there, you know, I'm encouraging you to, to jot down a couple of actions that you might actually uh, take home and, and bolt into your, uh, your business uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, some essential terminologies that we need to get our head, heads around. Uh, you're familiar with uh, uh, weighing lambs. Every lamb producer nowadays has a, has a weigh system on, on his property. If he doesn't, his local livestock agent brings ones out and does that. And fat scoring, you know, putting the hands on the back and measuring the fat score. It, that's something that's actually dropped away a bit over recent years. And as we get an eating quality focus, that will actually become more important again. Hot standard carcass weight to an Osme trim, you know, that's uh, uh, pretty standard terminology. And dressing percentage, this is the one where we get a little bit mixed. Some producers, some livestock agents call dressing percentage yield. Uh, it's not, it is actually dressing percentage. And dressing percentage is hot standard carcass weight, you know, divided by the actual live weight of, of the animal. Um, the new terminologies coming on board will, uh, will be saleable meat yield percentage um, and uh, that's basically the, uh, the whole carcass in lamb, you know, we are fortuitous that we can actually sell meat, bone and fat to the consumer and they enjoy the experience. They don't like too much of the fat uh, and they don't like too much of the bone but in uh, other species you know, they just like to actually ha have the, the meat on, on its own. Um, and then we move on to lean meat yield and you can see there uh, a picture you know, of the section. You can see uh, uh, this uh, side of lamb here trimmed out. We've got the bone on this side. Uh, the lean meat here trimmed to 80% chemical lean so there's uh, still a little bit of fat you know, in what we call uh, the lean meat yield um, and then the, the the fat out over here to the side. And then we move on to the, the next terminology now, lean meat yield percentage. 
um, and uh, that's actually the kilograms of lean meat uh, divided by um, the uh, uh, hot standard carcass weight. So you can see the lean meat yield from the previous uh, uh, slide divided by the whole carcass weight. And that's what we call lean meat yield percentage and that's the new piece of terminology that most of our measurement technologies are going to be based on. Um, and final piece of essential uh, terminologies is you'll hear some of the scientists refer to CT lean and basically you know, that's the leanness of a carcass measured through a normal uh, human uh, CT scanner. Yeah, those of you who have been unfortunate to be involved in some ill health and may well have actually uh, uh, been through the process of having a CT scan and uh, so as a, a research fraternity now uh, we ensure that subsets of all the research lambs actually end up going through to CT scanner and we actually get a measure of the actual leanness on the carcass and this is the gold standard it's the most accurate uh, and most uh, uh, repeatable uh, form of measuring the amount of lean um, in, in, the, uh, in the animal. Obviously you know, uh, we, we don't have those uh, equipment in the processing uh, uh, chains at this point in time but heavens knows into the future that may well be the case but it, in the interim we're making sure that in our research projects they are all calibrated to that to CT lean. Um, and then finally from, we're talking about lemur yield, then we need to talk about eating quality, uh, intramuscular fat, uh, and that's the fat within the actual meat itself. Um, in the beef industry, it's called marbling, it's quite visual, it's very uh, emotional, quite romantic, good to, for branding and that sort of thing. In the lamb, you actually can't see the intramuscular fat with your naked eye, and so we're having to work quite hard to develop uh, objective carcass measurement technologies that actually are going to help us and assist us to measure uh, 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 intramuscular fat uh, at chain speed, you know, within in a lamb processing plant. We're not there yet, uh, but we're definitely uh, down the pathway. So that's the new terminologies that are going to be banded around. They'll be terminologies you need to uh, start to get fami familiar with. Um, the journey that we're on, value-based marketing, you know, is really starting to, to ramp up now. You know, for two and a half decades, uh, we've been trading on weight and fat in terms of value-based marketing. And we will continue to do that you know, with all the technologies that come on board. But as the technologies come on board, they will just be an overlay grid on top of what we know as a standard weight and fat grid. So here, here now you can see that uh, you know, uh, uh, some uh, producers do actually have the ability uh, to get feedback uh, from their processing plant via MLA's livestock data link, a web-based portal, um, and they can actually get a, a first prediction of the lean meat yield percentage of, of their land. Also, those of you involved in MSA and have accreditation, you, know, you get some feedback in that area as well. Um, what we hope to do over the next couple of years, and definitely uh, well and truly down that pathway, is the uh, introduction of uh, DEXA technology, uh, which will actually enhance our, uh, our capability to measure lean meat yield percentage at line speed um, uh, with a, a greater degree of accuracy. And uh, from the MSA or eating quality side of things, we are looking to, uh, uh, to, to bolt in a, a, a eating quality index. Those of you who actually have beef, uh, you'll be quite familiar with that index, been around for a couple of years now. You know, we would hope that we've uh, got enough pillars in place that we'll actually have uh, uh, one for the sheep side of things as well. And uh, what of the future, 2020 and beyond that? You know, the younger ones in, in the room here, you may well be part and parcel of the development of you know, CT scanners in processing plants, measuring lambs for leanness at, at line speed, 10 lambs a minute. Can't do it here and now. People are talking about it. The Europeans have got some prototypes in place. You know, definitely got to look down the, down the pipeline and see what might be coming. So how is all this work happening? Basically, it has revolved around two uh, huge collaborative co-investment uh, 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 projects um, that are going on uh, simultaneously at the one time. In addition to that, uh, MLA's donor company is actually injecting some funds into these programs. The MLA donor company is an extra bucket of money from the federal government that comes in alongside the research when participants can put in hard cash to, be, uh, uh, to, to projects. And so this is additional money to the producer levies that as producers uh, you actually pay uh, through to your peak cancel and then gets 
distributed to the three uh, uh, delivery organisations, MLA being one of those. Also AMPC, Australian Meat Processing Company, Corporation, uh, they actually channel some funds in and uh, above all it's actually the supply chains themselves investing huge amounts of private dollars um, into <coughs> these uh, two projects. The, the two projects in particular is the Sheep CRC, um, it uh, uh, ran from uh, 2008 to 15 and then was fortuitous uh, because of the collaboration nature going on in the industry, the progressive outlook uh, uh, there, you know, the, the federal government in their wisdom chose to extend that CRC for a further four years and that's the area uh, where we work in uh, um, the uh, meat science pro uh, program and uh, the data that I'll sort of share with you uh, uh, in the following slides. In addition to that, we've been able to couple that up with another grant from the federal government called the Advanced Livestock Measurement Technologies, uh, and that'll go on for an extra year. And that one's really souping up uh, or, uh, the uh, uh, objective carcass measurement area uh, across uh, uh, three species, uh, lamb and sheep, uh, beef and pork. Um, the federal government is pretty keen uh, for industries to get out of their silos and collaborate uh, where the technologies are common across various industries and so we responded to that as a group, put in the application and were favoured with a, a successful outcome there. As I mentioned before, um, our, uh, our major tool of trade you know, is the land value calculator, uh, a, a fairly uh, specialised piece of Excel uh, um, um, software where we can actually uh, uh, move into a plant um, and uh, explore with them the value proposition of investing and providing feedback to producers on, on lean meat yield. Um, so basically uh, uh, we determine what cuts um, the, they might be doing uh, and in particular the proportions of cuts, um, that varies uh, depending on the market specification. Uh, we can actually uh, then from our research um, you know, uh, predict the weights of those uh, cuts out of a carcass. Um, we then add to that uh, the retail price that they actually receive uh, for, for those cuts uh, and then we can actually uh, add the cost, the, the cost within that actual supply chain or processing plant. And from there we can calculate a simple gross margin and then we've actually got a tool to actually answer all the what ifs. You know, what if we actually source a different specification of lamb? What if these lambs we actually cut them a different way? What if you know, the market we target actually has got more money or less money? What happens if the market's got more volume or take more volume you know, at, at a certain price? So we're empowering them with some um, key information that helps them um, uh, further define the market specification that they offer to, uh, to, to the industry. Um, in addition on the land value calculator, uh, we've added some other modules and one of those has been the grass seed module. Um, we have a major focus on, on grass seeds, a huge cost to the Australian lamb industry. Uh, the whole nation works together, that colleague here, Jeff, has been, been, been a part of that. Uh, but it was driven by the processors themselves. You know, they they realised that uh, yeah, they were having to deal with a problem that was occurring far further down the supply chain, out on farm. Um, and uh, so uh, yeah, we, we've assisted them to actually identify the two cost of grass seeds in their business. They thought it was about a dollar a kilogram when they actually had a heavily seeded lamb. When we've actually done the bone outs of the heavily uh, infested lambs, done the calculation of all the add-on effects within the plant, you know, we very quickly found that for some plants it was costing them two to three dollars a kilogram uh, 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 loss. You know, uh, uh, in terms of actually having to process those seedy lambs. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I realise I'm in the land of milk and honey here. No grass seeds here, Jeff, uh, but there are uh, obviously some uh, uh, lambs would come into the district with the <coughs> seeds on them. In terms of economical analysis, some of the processors have actually gone on and done their own economic analysis. And here I'll just share with you the example um, uh, of uh, a, a JBS business cadet from the Marcus Oldham College who actually presented a paper at the, uh, the Lamex in Albury uh, just last year. Perhaps a show of hands of who actually went to Lamex in Albury. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, so a good 20 or 30 percent of you. Yep. So you may have actually seen um, uh, this this presentation there. But the the graph, uh, in particular, quite a simple one. It's got the normal weight uh, categories along the x-axis along the bottom. Here. Yep. Up the uh, y1 axis here, we've got lean milk yield percentage, and you can see as the lambs get heavier. Um, and normally with heaviness become, is age, we actually know that uh, lean meat yield percentage will actually decrease, yep, and so we're getting less, less lean meat yield, uh, but we're getting higher fat as the, as the animals age. And so uh, she coupled that uh, with uh, uh, what it actually meant to the profit uh, side uh, from those carcasses and found, you know, there is a quite a sweet spot here in the middle um, that actually uh, uh, maximised the profit from those carcasses out of one of their uh, uh, processing plants. And so increasingly, you know, the uh, 
uh, supply chains are doing this analysis and you'll see their specifications or their grids you know, start to change uh, shape. We've had a very flat grid, you know, give us lambs between 18 and 32 kilograms, you'll start to see some uh, changes around the ends and you'll see some uh, uh, sweet spots start to appear in various uh, 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 positions in the actual grids themselves. So lean meat yield, you know, uh, uh, it um, uh, maximises um, the profits along the whole supply chain. You know, it's a consumer, as I said before, we are totally consumer focused in the lamb industry. You know, and, and they want value uh, for the dollars um, that they actually invest in their buy in lamb. You know, we're actually asking them to pay the same for the lean meat yield in a lamb as what they might pay for seafood, like crayfish or something like that. You know, $90 a kilogram, you, know, you say, oh no, we don't sell lamb for $90 a kilogram. But if you take the bone and the fat out of a lamb loin chop, uh, chop um, and just uh, uh, sell them the lean meat in that, yep, it's pretty close to $90 a kilogram. If they're going to pay the same price, they're going to want good value and they're going to want repeated quality. They want the same premium quality every time they actually select a lamb. The processors themselves, yep, uh, they've realised for quite a long time that they've been paying uh, meat prices uh, for fat, which actually cost them to trim off the carcasses and then they actually have a, a lower sale price for that fat as well. And on farm, a, as producers, yep, uh, those of you that have done lifetime new management, uh, pro graze, those types of uh, training courses, you'll know that it costs you a significant amount of more uh, feed to actually uh, produce a lamb that is a fat score two than a fat score four. And yet still today, we still have plenty of lambs coming through the system of fat score fives and sixes. Um, yep, so uh, you know, we, we, we're still placing plenty of fat on our animals. Whether that be through the genetics, I suspect not, but through the production systems that we're actually in place. So the industry is definitely after more muscle, um, not fat. You know, and if we can actually get this right, we can grow the lambs uh, faster, turn them off earlier, keep them out of the grass seeds, as I early mentioned before. You know, or we can actually finish to heavy weight if the processors still continue to have you know, heavy weight as, as one of their market specifications. So let me just give you a quick overview of, of the whole uh, um, supply chain and our focus on precision measurement. You can see here, yeah, we are totally consumer focused. You know, we want high quality product um, uh, every time on, on the plate. Those, those plates definitely have to come from a selection of cuts and the consumer is actually asking us to be innovative uh, with our cuts. So we definitely have to keep the size of our carcasses up, uh, but we have to keep the fat off of them. You know, it, it, we have to have the carcasses. The carcasses come from a live animal and the genetics come from the bucket of genes that we actually combine together from the, 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 the ram and you. You know, our, our penultimate uh, our goal here is actually to have feedback moving right along the whole value chain or supply chain you know, uh, on a value basis. So feedback and also price signals uh, uh, coming all the way back through the chain. <clears throat> so let's have a quick look at the genetic side of things. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, we've got some trends going the right way in the genetic area. You, know, you can see here that the, the uh, black line you know, is carcass weight. You know, it's trending up year on year. Basically, we're adding 200 grams of carcass weight per annum to each lamb that's actually produced in Australia. That's a great outcome. If you want a visuality, basically we're putting a Big Mac burger, an extra Big Mac burger on the back of every lamb that we produce in Australia year on year, and that potential is set by the investment uh, by our seed stock producers in, in, in driving the, the animals forward. Coupled with that is obviously we are increasing the lean meat yield percentage, but we have a couple of negative correlations that we need to manage. And one is shear force, which is obviously a, 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 a close relationship to tenderness. And you can see the green line here, we've actually been able to halt the rise in actual the, the shear force here. So we've actually got that in check at this point in time. The red line is the intramuscular fat, and you can see that's been slowly trending down, and that's our challenge. We must continue to increase our carcass weight, but actually uh, be able to at least hold our trend down in intramuscular fat, or in uh, most of the industry, most of us believe we'll be able to turn that around and actually trend that on up. So the genetic correlations that we're actually managing here, you know, uh, you can see that intramuscular fat, um, it, as that increases, uh, the tenderness increases, that's a positive uh, correlation. As we increase lean meat yield percentage, the intramuscular fat decreases you know, at a quite a high negative correlation. Um, and as we increase lean meat yield percentage, the tenderness also decreases at a, at a moderate uh, correlation there. So the geneticists, the seed stock producers in the room, hopefully they've taken that task on board. We know they have because through the measurement and benchmarking, uh, we can see that they're actually trying to uh, uh, ensure that they actually are incre increasing 
growth rate and all your other attributes but at the same time uh, managing that, that eating quality side of things. Um, yep. So basically, uh, you know, we've, uh, um, we've developed research values uh, for these new uh, uh, genetic traits uh, and uh, we needed to run them through a proof of concept uh, uh, process. So MLA invested quite significantly in 20 lean meat yield and eating quality producer demonstration sites. So they are out on commercial producers properties. Some may well have been uh, in this region and producers may well be sitting in the room. Um, some, over some 50 or 60 people were involved in these trials uh, and the trials actually ran right through the whole supply chain from the genes right through to the endpoint to the, the processing of it. There were 16 terminal sire sites and four merino sites. On each site some 400 odd ewes were AI'd uh, to lambs of high and low lean, whoops, lean meat yield uh, percentage and also of eating quality which was the uh, 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 shear force. Um, and uh, you know, basically what, what we found there is the research breeding values uh, predicted uh, the performance of the progeny. So we actually did a large scale progeny test. The progeny performed as predicted by the research breeding values of the actual sires. So basically, you know, the ASBVs work. That piece of work was then coupled in with uh, um, the major investment in the uh, uh, MLA resource flocks, which are two, two flocks um, um, across Australia where some uh, um, uh, 3,000 ewes uh, are mated each year to a very diverse uh, selection of sires within the industry so that we actually got the maximum diversity of uh, uh, progeny uh, uh, to be uh, totally evaluated. You know, basically, if it grows, we measure it um, and, uh, and then that actually starts to inform the uh, uh, genetic breeding values as well. So in Australia here you can see we've, we've always used the individual animal performance, we've coupled it with the performance of the re relatives through the pedigree and now through this work and the genomic testing that goes on uh, with the trials that I've just talked about uh, we're actually able to add uh, genetic uh, uh, values uh, based on some of the hard to measure traits. You, you realise I'm talking about the carcass traits but also there's reproduction traits and, and also the internal parasite traits that if you actually don't kill the animal you actually can't measure it and so uh, by intensely measuring in some selected uh, well pedigreed flocks uh, you can actually uh, then develop some uh, genomic breeding values. So we've got a world first here in Australia where we have Australian sheep breeding values that are enhanced uh, by the uh, uh, genomic testing going on in these research flocks but also in leading uh, seed stock uh, flocks uh, throughout Australia um, and that's a real game changer you know, for our Australian industry. <laughs> In terms of measurement technologies, um, you know, we've uh, basically been focused as an industry on indirect uh, measurement uh, technologies um, and uh, the one most popular has been the hot standard carcass weight and the GR measurement, whether it uh, be knife or by the Australian uh, um, Osmeet probe. Uh, that has had a moderate degree of accuracy but it has some limitations. It's okay uh, but it uh, struggles to run at uh, a modern uh, chain speed of 10 to 12 lambs a minute, often requiring two staff every staff you add in a supply chain costs a significant more amount of dollars. And so what we've been exploring in collaboration with industry is actually to look at more direct measures of uh, uh, carcass composition uh, rather than actually using indirect and the one that's uh, bubbled out of there has been the, the DEXTER, the, the dual x-ray uh, 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 anal analyst system. It has a high degree of accuracy, some 80% accuracy, maybe a tad more and we've uh, already got two of those, one uh, bolted into one plant in Australia, the other actually has just arrived from New Zealand and over the next three or four months will be bolted into the plant. So that's through our proof of concept uh, embedding R&D within the supply chain uh, from the from the beginning. So just to recap on some of those technologies, most of you will be fin uh, familiar with fat scoring. Uh, here's the the GR knife that the uh, the plants use to measure the the thickness of the, the fat on the carcass. And here's the old Osmeet probe, um, uh, not serviced anymore in industry, and uh, you, you'd struggle to find one uh, around uh, within a supply chain there. Um, we had a, a, for a decade or so a video image analysis and the commercial product available was called uh, Viascan. Um, it um, um, uh, moderately uh, uh, had modest accuracy for measurement of uh, lean meat yield percentage. Uh, the New Zealanders grabbed it uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Zest and uh, they still have a dozen or so uh, running in New Zealand. Um, it, in Australia it was never calibrated to the GR measurement and Osmeet is the regulators of the standards and languages. Uh, 
that go on within the industry and without that calibration, you know, it actually couldn't progress on to become a, a measure of, of lean yield percentage. Also, some of the business models associated around that uh, had, had some problems. So, 10, thank you, yep. So what we've moved towards now, you know, is um, a dual uh, energy x-ray analysis. Basically a number of the plants are starting to put uh, robotics uh, into their plants, robotics to actually speed up uh, the chain speed to take um, uh, high risk jobs like bandsaw jobs, you know, out of the supply chain and to increase the accuracy. And so uh, Scott's Automation have uh, uh, one set of robotics that basically, you know, by bolting them into the supply chain, um, it will actually uh, uh, have a pay back uh, within 18 months to two years just based on the precision cutting where you've actually got you know uh, a robot cutting at a predefined place based on an x-ray scan of where the ribs are and maximizing the amount uh, of muscle and uh, and uh, meat to sell out of, out of the loin loin region and so what we've done is actually had a look at the 2d x-ray uh, um, technology around that and actually removed one of the x-ray panels and put in a, a DEXA panel uh, and that DEXA panel gives us a 3D image and from that 3D image we can actually start to, uh, to see the difference between the bone, uh, the muscle and the fat and through uh, you know, computer technology with pixelation and that sort of thing we're able to measure uh, the percentage and then to quickly determine a lean meat yield percentage. Um, so the uh, the Dexter is just Dexter is just one part of, of a bigger uh, automation uh, program going on in a number of the uh, uh, Australian land processing plants. There is a lovely six minute video uh, on, on the web, um, but uh, I won't show that today. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, those of you who are uh, web savvy, you know, just uh, type in Scott's Automation, um, you know, uh, Leap System, JBS Australia, and uh, it, it'll take you there pretty quickly. All that piece of work was co-funded between the processor and the MLA donor company. As I said before, it's an extra bucket of money from federal uh, government that is matched one, one, one for one and doesn't involve our producer levies. Our producer levies are used for the on-farm research you know, and, and, and marketing side of things. And as I mentioned before, yep, uh, you know, uh, the penultimate, the gold stand that we use in our research and may well become commercial in some 10 or 15 years down the track, you know, is the CT scan. So that's lean meat yield percentage. Um, intramuscular fat, um, I'll just touch on it quickly here with one technology. Colleague Steph's going to talk about some others in, in her presentation. But we've been researching technologies that, um, uh, and we have one uh, from, uh, uh, from Europe, uh, a, a hyperspectral cameras, camera, so it actually has a different wavelength that actually records. And it's actually got quite a good correlation. A 0.5 uh, R squared is actually a, a, a moderate correlation and would be quite satisfactory to make a start in actually uh, measuring the e e lean, uh, the intramuscular fat percentage on, on a carcass um, and so uh, uh, we, we would hope that a simple camera like this may actually just bolt into one of those robotic systems that are going on and as the loin pops up uh, on a part of the robotic system a picture can be taken and, and uh, you know we've got a, uh, an estimation of intramuscular fat percentage. That's our hope. We don't have it. We, we thought we had it up and running quite well uh, but the company itself sort of said yeah lamb industry in Australia yep I can sell you a few units. What about the beef industry and so uh, yeah, they've been romanced by the Australian beef industry and they're actually taking a step back they're doing the same thing for beef and hopefully the two of them will come together yep. Um, and then um, some supporting, oh sorry, uh, uh, and why are we focused on the, the eating quality side of things? Yeah, basically we've done a number of survey works um, uh, here in Australia, a data set of 1,800 uh, uh, participants. We've done similar work in China and, and again in uh, the US and a, and it, uh, USA and it shows very similar trends here. Basically, if you have a stock standard three-star product here uh, and, you, and that's your base price, when you actually give um, uh, consumers a piece of meat that they would rate above that as a four star or a five star, you know, that they are clearly identifying they are prepared to pay more for that. You know, that's quite exciting um, and, and it gives us uh, heart to, to continue to progress in this eating quality area. Um, we have some um, uh, supporting technologies that are on the go, so hook tracking, um, that's RFID in the plant where the carcass when it goes up on a gambrel can actually be traced all the way through to the boning room um, and that hook tracking technology is not the same as individual uh, 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 animal identification, it's actually just to track the animal within the plant uh, but it actually can be coupled with the EID if, if need be. 
Um, MSA, I've touched on that before, we have a basic uh, simple pathways um, uh, process at this point in time. So perhaps another show of hands if I may, uh, people who are actually who know that they are MSA accredited for sheep meat, show of hands. Yeah, only about 20 or 30 percent. Yep, okay. So, uh, yep, uh, so obviously, you know, uh, it does depend on the supply chain that you actually supply and what they, uh, that they request in that area. But we're finding increasingly supply chains are, uh, are switching on in that path. And then obviously we're going to uh, add in with the research we're doing the potential for MSA Mark II, which will actually have an eating quality index associated with that. Yep, good. Yep. Um, so in terms of tools for producers, what's out there for you to actually prepare yourself for value-based marketing in these two new traits, lean meat yield percentage and, and eating quality. MLA have invested in a web-based feedback portal. It's called Livestock Data Link. It's available to all supply chains um, in Australia and some 20 odd have actually started the process of actually uh, um, exploring how they actually might uh, utilise it. We have uh, one supply chain who definitely offers it as a service to their uh, their producers and so from your standard kill sheet you know with the click of a switch you can get your whoops you can get yourself a grid uh, a very simple grid like this here. Uh, these are ones that are within spec. Here's some out of spec animals, and with the uh, web based portal, you can click on the out of spec and it'll take a, you away to a solutions library um, so that you can actually get a few tips on things that you might attend to in your business. Also, within the uh, uh, livestock data link, you can actually um, benchmark yourself batch on batch throughout a year, year, year on year throughout your system. You can actually benchmark yourself within the region, and also you can benchmark yourself uh, now nationally as well. So quite a powerful um, uh, 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 support tool there. Basically based on the principle, you know, if you measure it, it means you can actually monitor it over periods of time and when you've got that piece of information, you can manage it. Without actually a piece of data in your hand, you struggle to manage most things. The other tool you know, is sheep genetics. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you use uh, sheep breeding values as just one part of your RAM uh, selection process. You know, uh, and we've used the breeding values for a significant number of time. They are further enhanced now by genomic testing and we actually have uh, new breeding values in lean meat yield and, and eating quality. Um, and uh, in terms of MSA, you know, those of you who are uh, accredited producers, you'd know the things that you need to do on farm. You know, they are standard, good best practice of the lamb industry, but by being accredited, it just sharpens the pencil in, in that area. And with MSA, you know, what we're trying to do is actually managing the glycogen bucket. You know, the, the actual amount of energy to ensure the lamb has enough energy so that when he leaves his, your farm, goes on the processing journey, you know, he's got enough energy in there to manage all the stresses that might be placed on him. So in terms of the take home messages today, you know, I, I would encourage you to start to seek carcass compliance feedback in terms of lean meat yield percentage and eating quality. Uh, utilise the decision support tools that are out there, the ones I've just mentioned. Gain an understanding of the effects of eating quality from the production management decisions you make on farm. And above all, uh, have yourself a plan, you know, one that actually you know, uh, all, all the people uh, in your business can share with, because everyone in your business uh, plays a part in ensuring the lambs actually have uh, a high uh, lean meat yield percentage and a good e eating quality. And so uh, you know, there's, there's a simple plan there you know, of some targets, you know, and you might just articulate how you might uh, um, attend to those in the future.